All right, I'm Tony, owner of DHD. I have my son, Tyler, and my right hand man, Chad. And we're uh, going to do an autopsy on uh, last minute hooker's motor that uh, went up in flames. I'm sure everyone's heard about it a million times. Um, we're going to see how it held up to running for over a minute without uh, oil pressure, and we're estimating at 10,000 RPMs. So normally. Diesels only run about half that. Um, so we're going to get into tearing this thing apart. The charger normally sits up almost exactly right there in the stack. Tyler put stack up there. And uh, the charger was spinning about 112,000 RPMs when it let go. Drive pressure and boost was all within check. But the charger decided to let go. Just the shrapnel, you can take a look at that stack. Um, just made a mess. So you can see this uh, exhaust housing on this charger here. Not so nice. All right, if you want to come over here, I'll show you what had happened when that charger let go. So the charger had such an explosion, severed the wires on the fuel pressure regulator, uh, causing the CP3 pumps to run wide open. Then uh, a fragment of the exhaust housing hit this high pressure line and broke it right off of the fuel rail. And as you can see right up into the intake, it knocked a pretty good hole in there. So what we had is after the explosion, we had these two CP3 pumps, two 14 millimeter extra G pumps running wide open spraying fuel up into the hood and down into the motor and that's what caused the motor to run on wildly. So it was running on diesel fuel that was pumping out here and there was no way of shutting it off. So we're going to uh, start tearing it apart and we'll see what it looks like inside. Fragment of the charger did the damage to this built aluminum return rail and, and to the cover. Found their way underneath of this fuel rail. you what it looks like in the, the rear of the motor we removed the rear engine plate so we could put that on the motor that is actually in the truck so uh, one of the things that we noticed is we don't seem to have any discoloration around the bearings um, no evidence of stuff coming out of them we're kind of hoping we're gonna find that we don't have a whole lot of trouble here but uh, we'll find out here shortly So we have here our Waggler bridges still all in place and uh, trend rocker shafts and rocker shaft stand. Yep, it all looks really good so far. That's some peak oil was keeping her lubricated. So we take a peek at to the pistons and I have to say that the valves never contacted the pistons. So the waggler heads took those high RPMs without damaging that at all. The rods a little bit where the rods or the pistons just contacted the head a little bit. Not too much. That looks really good.
You can see, hold on, bud. I don't see any discoloration in any of the rods or the mains. So really, all in all, at the high speeds, it really looks good. So I think we have some bearing damage, though. Impressively, the Simpico held it together at that crazy high RPMs with no oil pressure. As you can see, there's still a really good oil film on here. So, we have it tore down. The motor that run possibly 10,000 RPMs for a minute with no oil pressure. Um, the dry sump belt was burned off a bit. Uh, you can take a look here at these journals. The oil film, the Simpico 2050 race oil is still, the film is all still on the crank yet. The crank spins beautiful. Um, there'll be no problem here. We'll have this thing back up and going in no time. The rods, they show a little wear on the bearings, but overall, I would say they're in perfect shape for what it went through. Uh, cylinder heads look awesome. Unbelievable how good it looks for what it did. So uh, that kind of sums it up.